Uh, my name is Nadia Zold, and uh, my film is the documentary feature, Larry Flint for President, and we are here at the Mammoth Lakes Film Festival. So Larry Flint for President tells the story of Larry Flint's campaign for president in 1983-84 against Ronald Reagan. And during that time, he raised a certain uh, freedom of speech issues regarding the right to satirize public figures, which eventually went to the Supreme Court and uh, he won the case in a unanimous decision in his favor, which uh, allows us today to criticize public figures through satire and parody. Um, and we are uh, a stronger democracy for that. So I uh, stumbled across a trove of archival footage that had never been seen before. It was shot during Larry's campaign for president in 1983, 84, um, by my uncle, Steve Lindsay. And I was fascinated by this story because this wasn't a story that had been told before. And uh, it perfectly highlighted this very complicated but um, true American story of uh, kicking against the pricks. And what I really, what resonated with me was just his punk attitude and that he, this was a character that had soul and had something to say and then effectively really made a difference um, in our lives today with um, parody and satire being protected speech. He actually expanded the First Amendment to include that. So the initial archive uh, ha was like 20 boxes of tapes and um, it, came to around 70 hours of footage. A lot of that was interviews, um, interviews with Larry Flint and with all the people who uh, were around him at the time, including Timothy Leary and Frank Zappa. Um, but then there was also a lot of great uh, verite footage. And um, that was like the, the most fun to watch because you just see these scenes unfold or interviews with people in his hometown in Kentucky and uh, you get a feeling of uh, the early 80s and just how it was, it was not all bubblegum pop Madonna. Uh, there was a lot of like anti-Reagan sentiment that um, you know, now uh, a, a lot of people look at Reagan as just like, oh, this is this great president, but he was, um, he, he was taking uh, the country in a very different turn and Larry was uh, fighting against that. So uh, it was beta tapes um, and uh, like three quarter inch tapes. So we digitized those tapes and that was the, the basis of the film were these tapes. And then I went out and conducted my own interviews with um, people who were there. I uh, narrowed their criteria to it just being people who had lived during that time and who had witnessed it. So not people who, um, you know, would just, uh, you know, speak about Larry Flint um, in like a secondhand kind of way. No academics, unfortunately, <laughs> but um, it's uh, just pe people who lived it. And, um, and so that created another archive. And, uh, and then I also used um, this uh, incredible archive that, of Larry Flint's, including 16 hours of audio from when he was in prison. So every time he called his office, uh, his uh, assistants would um, at his request, record all these conversations. And that just showed uh, a different story that was never captured on film because no cameras could go in the prisons. But um, it, uh, it, was, it was rich and um, necessary to include that too. All of Larry's archive is, belongs to Larry Flint and he gave us permission to use. Um, the uh, archive that my uncle was storing actually um, belonged to, belongs to my uncle because uh, he, uh, he, had, he had made this deal with Larry um, where if, uh, if, he was never, if, if, he, if Larry missed one payment, um, the footage would belong to him. And Larry was put in prison and Jimmy Flint uh, didn't end up paying the crew that week. And so the footage belonged to my uncle. So then uh, we made the deal with my uncle to license that material. Watching the footage, uh, I, I dove straight into to making the film, even though we were still looking for financing. So, the, but the only way to really have clinched the financing was to have been to, to be going full speed, and uh, as much as we could, 
doing as many interviews as we could, editing as much as we could, and, um, and then only once we had uh, an assembly and um, a very you know, like polished uh, like 16 minute sizzle reel did we then get the financing. But um, it was a lot of help from interns, uh, especially um, my intern who then became my editor, Navzad Dabu. So um, the goodwill of crew who deferred their salaries and, um, and then just having faith that somehow funding would come through and um, Film Nation uh, really responded to it and uh, they came on as uh, financiers and producers along with um, another company, um, Sane Productions. We have a few offers um, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that something comes through soon. So um, we've had like really good critical response and um, we're going to, we're, do, we're doing the festival tour right now. So Mammoth Lakes is our West Coast premiere. Uh, we premiered at Tribeca and um, then we went to uh, two other fest like three, three other festivals. Um, and so this is our fifth festival, but uh, we have a bunch of uh, festivals in the south, um, including Austin and uh, Indie Memphis. Um, and, and now I have to like concentrate on uh, sending the film to um, the Midwestern uh, festivals because for me, it's really important to show this film to uh, the southern states and to um, the Midwest because Larry has, uh, you know, he, he was based out of Cincinnati, Ohio for a long time. I definitely think that a series should be made out of this. Um, and I would uh, happily help in any way I could, not as a director, because I um, intellectually am interested in going on to other subject matters, but um, in terms of the characters to interview, the books to read, the stories that um, are really worth telling. I mean, there's, there's a lot of like true crime, there's, uh, you know, some fascinating, there's fascinating stuff regarding pornography, regarding his shooting. He was shot by a white supremacist who ended up um, shooting uh, and killing 13 other people after shooting Larry Flint because he was offended by an interracial spread in the magazine. And this was actually the first um, interracial photo shoot um, shown in a, um, in a national uh, pornogra pornographic magazine. I mean, it's, and it's a really wonderful shoot. It's like, it's beautiful. It's, there's um, nothing offensive there. <laughs> when I met Larry Flint, um, I was pretty nervous because he's somebody who doesn't mince words and he kind of, he can see right through you. We, we, we had a two hour lunch um, facilitated by Larry Karaszewski, one of the writers of The People vs. Larry Flint. And um, that lunch went very well. I think that Larry saw that I was interested in the story and the characters and I wasn't interested in making um, kind of like an, uh, an expose of some kind or like a hatchet job. I was like just really um, jazzed on like these obscure characters like Madeline Murray O'Hare and really what was going on um, at the time. So he then uh, gave permission to use the footage and then also to um, go through his archive and um, he immediately signed a release um, giving me full creative control. So um, I would never have pursued the documentary unless I had that from the subject. Like to, to, ha to, to be sort of hamstrung by that would, would just uh, not be a, a, you know, a journalistic um, product. I, I met with Larry Flint many times. I wish that they were all recorded. Uh, I feel like the lunches uh, that we had I, I saw uh, a side of him that uh, was, was different from what was in the film, too. I mean, he'd, he'd mellowed out. Um, in one of our lunches, I asked him if he felt like there were any limits to freedom of speech. And he said, uh, definitely, he said that hate speech should not be protected speech. And that's a very, a very um, topical thing to say, especially right now where the, some of the biggest um, proponents of uh, freedom of speech are, you know, they're using the First Amendment to hide behind. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, some of the stuff that appears on 8chan is hate speech, and it's not, and, and you know, it's, th this is dangerous speech that's not, um, you know, it, it, sh it shouldn't be protected. <laughs> Unfortunately, like there, there are limitations to um, the First Amendment. My name is Nadia Zold. 
see you at Mammoth Lakes Film Festival.